Fox News host Kennedy, who apparently only has one name, decided to give us the rundown about the Bernie 2020 campaign and she wanted to make the case as to why we shouldn't support Bernie Sanders. Now, what she does here is attempt something that very few Fox News hosts try because it usually ends in complete failure. She tries comedy. And what you are going to see here, expectedly, is for her to bomb bad, and it just turns out into a complete cringe fest. Take a look. Socialism has been gaining traction over the last four years since dinosaur diet communist Bernie Sanders foisted himself onto the political scene. Like other septuagenarian has-beens, Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton, he's got Senate fever, and only the presidency will quiet the inner screams of disappointment. The problem with Bernie's fever is the blood has permanently rushed to his nether bits as this impossible socialistic fetish leaves his brain deprived and empty. That so many free-spending hussies are crowding his turf and stealing all his great ideas only further maddens the mad professor. When asked about the crowded progressive field with so many vultures picking at his political carcass, and why does he need to run, Bernard asked, why do they need to run? Oh, snap girl. He was also asked about the daunting socialist, uh, the idea of socialism, and shot back, I think what we have to do, and I will be doing it, is to do a better job maybe in explaining what we mean by socialism, democratic socialism. Well, that doesn't soften the blow. Qualifying the power and cash grab and limiting people's economic mobility and freedom as somehow democratic. It's okay, Your Honor. It wasn't murder. It was vegan murder. Ah, when you are forced to pay for everyone's health insurance and universal basic income and higher utility bills, and when you can no longer choose what you pay your employees, when you don't have a say in what materials go into your products, is that democratic? No, that's socialist. These things in the Green New Era are not mere suggestions or government spitballing. They will be coercively enforced, and if you are non-compliant, you will be fined. And if you don't pay, you will go to jail. But at least that's not authoritarian, right? When Bernie's not lying about socialism, he's going, but, but Sweden! Yes, he has a scando obsession and thinks he could turn the U.S. into an IKEA catalog. The problem is Denmark, Sweden, and the rest of Scandinavia have turned their economies into free market engines. They tax the middle class. They have cost-sharing programs that dimwits in the U.S. neither grasp nor admit to. And their average GDP military expenditure is just over 1%. Denmark spends $3.8 billion a year on defense. We spend almost 700 billion. All the Swedish meatballs in the world will never make a direct comparison between Scandinavia and the U.S., mostly because the socialist boobs in this country are too afraid of the free market. And that's the memo. That was so bad. <laughs> that was so bad. Holy shit. Can we bring up the um, tweet from Paul Joseph Watson about how the right is becoming better at comedy and it's making lefties nervous? Because I think it's relevant again. <laughs> Let's get to some of her um, one-liners here. Bernie Sanders is dinosaur diet communist. Okay. Quote, the blood has permanently rushed to his nether bits, edgy, as his impossible socialistic fetish leaves his brain deprived and empty. Ha! Got him! Okay. Um, <laughs> when it comes to him identifying as a democratic socialist. Well, that doesn't soften the blow. Qualifying the power and cash grab and limiting people's economic mobility and freedom as somehow democratic, it's okay, your honor, it wasn't murder. It was vegan murder. I don't know. I have i don't know. <laughs> um, I love how she doesn't realize that what she's describing here 
is capitalism. Because some of the policies that Bernie Sanders is advocating for that she deems socialist have already been implemented for decades in Canada. And yet they have more social mobility than Americans. It's no longer the American dream, it's the Canadian dream. She probably doesn't understand this, or maybe she knows this and gets it, but she's lying to you. Either way, that was an incredibly dumb point. Um, when it comes to freedom, she claims that Bernie Sanders and the left doesn't believe in freedom. But actually, it's her that doesn't believe in freedom. Because if you're okay with capitalism's corporate control and coup of our democratic institutions, frankly, then you don't believe in freedom. That's not freedom. Begging your insurance company to cover a procedure you need so you don't die when you're already paying them a monthly premium, that isn't freedom. Having private corporations frack in your backyard and poison your water, how is that freedom? Kennedy, explain how that's freedom. So what she's not telling you is that she's not necessarily in favor of freedom in general. She's in favor of one type of supposed freedom. She wants freedom from government at all costs. But in a capitalistic system, if you want full freedom from government, that means you will be enslaved by large multinational corporations. And she kind of alludes to this because she says, when you no longer choose what to when you can no longer choose what you want to pay your employees and when the government has a say over what types of materials go into their products, how is that democratic? So she said it right there. She's talking about the minimum wage. She's talking about the government and the FDA regulating what types of substances they put into our food and drinks. And to her, that isn't freedom. That's authoritarianism. So in her view, it's not social democracy or democratic socialism, I don't think she knows the difference, if you mandate that corporations have to pay their workers a living wage, or if you mandate that they can't put substances in our food that they sell to us that poison us, that's just not freedom to her. So in her view, freedom is allowing these large multinational corporations to run amok and put poisonous substances in our food and drinks and not allow the FDA to regulate them because in her view, it's perfectly fine if they want to cut a couple of corners and save a few bucks by jeopardizing our health, but the implication is that her view of freedom is so broad, it's so amorphous, that it would allow freedom to eat itself. Because when you allow for unfettered freedom, just generally speaking, then what that does that end up doing? It imposes on other people's freedoms. If I have the freedom to punch people in the face, that obviously imposes on their freedoms. If I have the freedom to own a nuke, and I'm a psychopath, I'm not, if I have the freedom to own a nuke, then obviously that potentially imposes on other people's freedoms. So there's no such thing as absolute freedom. We're all restricted in some ways, but if we're restricted in ways, specifically if large multinational corporations are restricted in ways where they don't overly exploit workers and have to pay them a living wage, where they don't rip us off and poison us, then I think that's a good thing. I think that their freedom to do that should be restricted because that helps us live free lives ourselves if these corporations can't poison us. I mean, think about this. It was just a couple of months ago when Donald Trump decided to postpone water regulations for farmers and what they use on lettuce and what happened. That led to a nationwide E. coli outbreak. But if you allow Kennedy to have her way, that's what would happen. That's essentially what she's advocating for. And it's either dumb or disingenuous. I don't know what it is, but either way, that view of freedom, what you call freedom, it doesn't sound amazing. Now, she actually, to her credit, doesn't invoke Venezuela, but she does talk about social democracies in Scandinavia that Bernie Sanders always cites as kind of an example of what we want to achieve here at home. And what she does there is try to paint this picture that, well, you know, it's not as peachy keen as progressives in the United States want you to believe. And this is the grand finale because she says they only have a defense budget that's 1% of their GDP. They only spend $3.8 million on the military. So that's how they're able to afford these social safety net programs. Gotcha. I don't think she realizes that progressives are some of the loudest people who call for us to cut the military budget so we can 
actually fund social safety net programs. So by telling us this, it's not a gotcha. You're not going to dissuade us from supporting social democracy. You're going to encourage us because that's what we should be doing. They're right. But she paints it as a negative, like a buffoon, because apparently she thinks we should be spending, what now, 50, 60% of our discretionary budget on the military? It's absurd. Absolutely absurd. And let me ask you this, Kennedy. If you are supposedly against big government, because big government equals socialism, but the military is a part of the government and you want a really, really big military, but government is socialism, are you not in favor of socialism yourself in the form of having a gigantic military? <laughs> in her worldview, spending less on the military in order to fund social safety net programs is a bad thing because she's someone who, she doesn't have to think about social safety net programs because she probably makes millions of dollars each year being a propagandist for Fox News. So it's kind of one of those situations where she's like, hey, fuck you all, I got mine. So why would I care about social safety net programs when I'm doing just fine? I could pay my rent. I'm never hungry. I don't have to worry about daycare and the cost of that. So she gets to worry about these superficial things like the military, which really it doesn't matter. The military, we spend so much on it that we spend more than the next seven countries combined, most of which are our allies, and it's just completely unnecessary. And even if we cut military spending in half, we'd still be spending more than all of our rivals. So I think that this clip is evidence that conservatives have got to stop trying comedy. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous, and he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.